to show you is a different kind of nanotubes that are related with biomaterial. They are made by peptides with a specific sequence are able to adopt this flat conformation in which the carbonyl and NH group allowed the formation of hydrogen bond interaction. So they stack on top of each other. Interestingly, of this type of structure is the diameter of the nanotube can be precisely controlled by the side of the ring. In addition, all the side chain of the peptide are projected outwards. So the properties of the nanotube can be modulated by the type of side chain that are present in the basic uh, unit. In the interior, there is a hole. So we have the potential to modulate the properties inside of the tube. Beside alpha amino acid, other amino acids like beta, delta, or even hybrids of alpha and epsilon can also form nanotubes by the same concept. They adopt the flat conformation, allowing the formation of hydrogen bond interaction. So the variety of tubular structure that can be prepared are very large, and so we believe that it's possible to create a large variety of function and application. What we were interested in is to address a question that cannot be achieved by the previous nanotube, is the preparation of tubular structure in which we have a specific functional group projected into the, the cavity of the nanotube. For that process, we think to use this kind of amino acid in which in the flat conformation allow the formation of the, of the flat conformation of the peptide and stacking to form the nanotube, but also we have this group that is projected into the cavity. So we might be able to change the properties by changing that kind of group. <coughs> what we start to do is to make peptides and try to make nanotubes and study the properties. This can provide a lot of information, but we work to the molecular level. So instead of working with nanotubes, we work with a variety of cyclic peptides that instead of forming the nanotube, they only come from dimers, because one of the phases is blocked. In that way, we can study molecule by molecule the formation of the, this type of interaction and learn about the uh, final structure of the nanotube. From these simple models, we were able to get a picture of the, the interaction. So we were able to get this cyclic peptide in the flat conformation, forming hydrogen bond interaction between the two subunits. For that kind of picture from X-ray uh, diffraction pattern, we were able to see how these methylene groups are projected into the cavity and what type of molecule go inside of the dimer hydrophobic, non-polar molecule, are crystallized into the lumen of this cyclic peptide. Another information that we got from this type of peptide is that we can precisely control the diameter of the, the, this uh, supramolecular species, working with peptide of different sites. 6, 8, 10, 12, 4, or 16 amino acids. All of them adopt the flat conformation and dimerize with very large association constant, so we can make potentially nanotubes with internal diameter going from the 7 angstrom to the 25 
and stones. With all this information, we try to look for some application. In the last 10 years, it has been developed a variety of application, like sensors, new material, ion channel models, or supramolecular drugs. Are these two topics where I would like to show you some of our uh, achievement in this area. As you can see, because all the side chains are pointing upwards of the, of the nanotube, we can change the environment in which the nanotube is formed. So in some cases, the peptide by itself just can dimer form the nanotube under appropriate condition. If you have a hydrophobic cyclic peptide, it will go to the membranes, and one is in the membrane, they can stack and form the nanotube. Depending on how is the sequence, the stacking of the nanotube can be perpendicular to the plane or parallel to the plane, having different properties. <clears throat> Some of these applications are related with the biological membranes. They are very important component of the cells because allowed to isolate the proteins, the nucleic acid, and all the function into the cell. But they are formed this amphipathic molecule, phospholipid. They form the bilayers and they are very good isolator. But the membrane has also the function to regulate the migration or the transport of different molecules from one side to the other side of the cell. And in addition, they have to regulate interaction with other cells to replicate or reproduce or even to, to, uh, to eat. For that kind of function, there is a variety of different protein, ion channels, receptor, motor, molecular motors, or enzyme that are playing a very important function for the cell. So it's not surprising that there is a kind of, of antibiotic that are made by pluricellular uh, organisms that try to attack the membrane of the bacteria. And for that, we have a variety of different peptides that are used with this purpose, like man manganins, defensin, gramycidin, or, and so on. And the way that this peptide, antibiotic peptide work is that they interact with the membrane, forming a different type of supramolecular structure that destroy the membrane. And all these peptide, they have the same function, but different structure, alpha helix, delta helix, beta seeds, and so on. The concept is most of these peptide has in common the use of amphipathic structure. They have cationic groups and hydrophobic groups. And normally, when they interact with the membrane, they fall in a specific structure in which all the hydrophobic group are pointing in one direction, all the cationic group in the other, in the other direction, so they can interact with the membrane. So it's no surprising that there are companies that are interested to create new drugs for bacterial infection using antimicrobial uh, peptide models, at least. Here you have a list of this kind of, of study that has been that are carried out in, comp in different companies. So what we were interested in is playing just with a small peptide that can stack on top of each other, form the nanotube, and the, the formation of this nanotube will destroy the ability of the cell to survive. And they can form single nanotubes, they can form bundles of nanotubes, or they can form the carpet-like structure 
to destroy, to destroy the, the, the cell membrane. And we start working some time ago with cationic and amphipathic peptide. And we found that some of these peptides has a good activity against uh, staphylococcus resistant uh, uh, bacteria. And here you have a good range of selectivity versus human cells. In this case, in this case, red cells. And some of the in vivo study, some also a nice protection for the mice that were treated with some of these peptides. So in reality, we are seeing that single peptide goes to the membrane, interact with the membrane, form the nanotubes, and destroy the cell. And this is the, the mechanism proposed for this kind of, of nanotubes. They form what is called the carpet lab mechanism, in which you have several types of nanotubes packing together to store in the membrane. The beauty of that approach is from one single peptide, you can form a variety of different nanotubes. So, they, because they can rotate one with respect to the other one. So in the way that they have to adapt to the membrane in the best and appropriate condition. And probably the selectivity comes not from the interaction with the hydrophobic part, but with the hydrophilic interaction with the protein that are on the membrane. So maybe we are able to work with our cyclic peptide and form this kind of antimicrobial uh, uh, agents. We have prepared, prepared very recently a variety of different cyclic peptides for our amphipathic, some cationic, and they have the special characteristic to use gamma amino acids, cyclic gamma amino acids. And we see here some good activity against bacteria, low activity against uh, human cells. In reality, this is only one step. We are now trying to improve the selectivity using, like a model, this type of cyclic peptide, the mycin, that are very active uh, peptides. They have in common that are cyclic peptide, they have alternating D and L amino acids, and the main characteristic is they have sugar, sugar derivatives in the sequence. And that way they can achieve very high activity against the Staphylococcus aureus bacteria. So we have decided to create a new kind of cyclic peptide working with this type of gamma amino acid derived from uh, sugar. So we have prepared again the model with this cyclic peptide and studied the self-assembling process and we are able to get again the picture of this dimer that gives information about how they are packing, forming the supramolecular entity. So we believe now that we can go with this type of cyclic amino acid to make new uh, peptide that we hope to be more active than the previous one. So I have shown you how to make nanotube that try to be parallel to the membrane. But we also can try to make the nanotube perpendicular to the plane of the, of the, of the membrane. So these are the phospholipid, and this is the nanotube. For that approach, we have to use cyclic peptides that are decorated only with hydrophobic amino acid, in this case, this case tryptophan. So we prepare, prepare a variety of cyclic peptides with six and eight, this is another eight cyclic peptide, and I start to study the activity. Only the octamer, this one, shows some, uh, some activity. How 
we check the activity for transport of ions from one side of the membrane to the other side. We have used this instrument, this is the black lipid bilayer instrument, in which you have a cell that are divided in two parts, has a small hole here, a micropore, where you grow a bilayer. If you have now electrodes where you can apply a different voltage, so when the membrane is perfectly formed, there is no channel, there is no transport from one side to the other side of the cell. As soon as you form a channel, you start to see how the ions go from one side to the other, and you can record it, seeing the open and close state for the formation of the channel. So this jump from zero to whatever number give information about the number of ions that are transported from one side to the other side of the cubate. So this is the way that you precisely can check if they are forming tubes and if they are very active or not transporting ions. So these are real data from our peptide, from the octamer, where, as I mentioned, we have the closed state here and open states that are at this level. So we see that sodium, potassium, or cesium can be transported from one side to the other side of the membrane. But divalent ions like calcium, magnesium, cannot be transported. Neither chloride is transported by this system. So we have created a kind of hole in which we can transport ion of a specific characteristic. Monovalent ions, a cation, uh, uh, are transported. Here are some additional data where we see that the current is, rela is uh, related with the voltage that you are applying. There is no uh, any uh, modification of the current by the, the channel that we are making. One char uh, nice uh, characteristic of these nanotubes is that they show some special activity for sodium ion versus, versus uh, potassium or cesium. The diffusion coefficient for cesium versus uh, sodium is 0.65. In the channel, it's almost one to one. So this means that the sodium ion goes faster inside of the channel than outside of, of the channel. But in reality, although this is a good point to start, is nothing compared what we can do compared with the, with the nature in which the transport of sodium or potassium is very selective. So we still have to improve that properties in order to, to make this more useful. Uh, one characteristic in the transport is that we see several levels of transporting ion. From the same ion, potassium, we see very short channel or very short uh, events of transport, something that are longer and some one that are even more uh, uh, higher. And this is related with the characteristic of the nanotube. Depending on the number of subunits that we have in the nanotube, we will see different transport rate. The long one gives short events. The shorter nanotube provides the higher level of transport. So we can relate the conductivity with the number of cyclic peptides that form the nanotube. And this is the mechanism, how this structure can have the gating, opening, and closed state that can be just related with an assembling, disassembling process, related by the pressure of the lipid bilayer that make 
the tooth to form a disassemble or perhaps even to make the part of the nanotube to collapse due to the membrane uh, pressure. Regarding the chain of conductance, it can be related with the addition of subtraction of one subunit at the edge of the nanotube or perhaps by assembling a disassembling process with two different peptide subunits in each phase of the bilayer, forming nanotubes 3 plus 4 or 4 plus 4 to give this or that type of structure. And as I mentioned, we have to improve the selectivity for the transport of ion. So we are interested to create nanotubes with different properties inside. So we have been working in the preparation of a variety of different gamma amino acids with different functional groups here to improve the selectivity. We are still far away to get the nanotube on the membrane and study their transport ability. We just again have been working with simple model to study the formation of the dimer for the tetramer or the octamer. From here again, we learn a lot about the application. This small peptide forms this single dimer because the hydroxy group are interactive, are talking one to each other to say we have to be on top to form this type of structure. In the case of the octamer, we form a hydrophilic cavity that, don't want, that does not want to be formed in non-polar medium. So when we have this peptide with a free hydroxy group in chloroform, they don't want to, to form dimer. They want to fall in a different structure. So, but when we add a small amount of water or methanol, we immediately show the formation of one single dimer. So that gives us opportunity to control the formation of the nanotube on the membranes because once you form the nanotube, the water will go inside of the tube, stabilizing their formation. And that's all that I would like to, to show you today. I'd like to finish thanking the people that is working in the group. Especially, I'd like to thank to Manuel. He has started the study in nanotubes and now still is collaborating with me to get some of this study in transport and the preparation of antimicrobial agent. And finally, also, I'd like to thank to the financial support from the Spanish government, the European, or the Junta de Galicia. And also, I would like to thank all of you for your kind attention. Many thanks, uh, Professor Branja. Any question for Professor Branja about the nanotubes? Okay, concentration and stability depend a lot of the sequence of the peptide. Because besides the hydrogen bond interaction to form the nanotube, you have the side chain that can interact one to each other to stabilizing or destabilizing the nanotube. So they are sometimes uh, depending, the stability depend of pH media depend the presence of hydrophobic or hydrophilic solvent, so it depends a lot about the sequence. That gives you the opportunity to play with different sequence and different conditions to get the, the nanotube. And I'm sorry I cannot answer more precisely.
quite active area nowadays as we need a new antibiotics. And um, so um, I don't know if we missed some participation, but we, we have never uh, tested this kind of compounds in, in experimental animal experimental models. Yes, the original one, they were tested. Uh -huh. And the peptide has a large number of cationic group normally are toxic when you have IV injection. They promote some kind of, of uh, blood problem that are very bad for the mice. If you have intraperitoneal injection, they do not show this kind of toxicity. It depends, I think, because you have in the IV, you have to, to a very high concentration. They form a big cluster, cationic cluster, that interact with the with the with the cell. Uh, how it's called the heparin, the heparin to promote some plug plug in the in the blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They are very, very stable they are very because stable. they have the sequence is made of alternating natural and non-natural amino acids. So they are very stable to any kind of uh, enzyme to degrade the cationic or the, the peptide sequence, and they are also quite stable to high acidic condition. They can be in in acidic media for 48 hours without degradation. Just a curiosity, when you made the nanotubes, what is the length of the nanotube? That's one of the limitations for that kind of model, is once they want to start to assemble, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to stop. Only in the case of the peptide that goes to the membrane, mm -hmm. you control the length because only the hydrophobic part will facilitate the formation of the tube. If it's in the aqueous media, they will grow to a few micrometer length. Okay. Any more questions? Yes. We are working on that. Yeah, that's one of the, the our objectives for the future. Any more questions? Okay, thank you.